freedom I have found in you You're the healer Who makes all things new Yeah, yeah, yeah Not going back I'm moving on I'm here to declare to you My past is over in you He's happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Hey, if I, if I may say it, happy new year. We are in a brand new year, first Sunday of the year, and we are super excited. Can't wait to see what God has in store for us. And uh, let me be the first to just say this is going to be a busy year. I'm just going to speak it into existence because I'm telling you, I believe that God has some things in store for us. And I believe Pastor's going to talk just be led by the Holy Spirit on talking about the year and all that kind of stuff. And, hey, I, I'm excited because uh, when you're with God, you're winning already. Amen. Right. 
So uh, let's go ahead and stand all over the building. want to say it's good to see everybody. It's good to see a, our uh, new family that came in. Good to have you all in service with us. Hey, buddy. And uh, just want to, we just want to enter into the presence of God, let the Holy Spirit take over service. How many knows it's not by our might nor by our power, but it's by the Spirit, saith the Lord. And wherever the Spirit is, there's liberty. And so we want to be sure to let the Spirit of God be welcome in this place and let him have his way. Come on, let's go together in prayer right now. Father, we love you and we thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity, God. We consider it a blessing, Lord. God, to come as brother and sister united together, Father, as your body, Lord, to come into your house, God, Lord, and just offer ourselves as living sacrifices to you, Father. Holy Spirit, have your way in this service. God, as we lift up our hands, as we lift up our voices, God, as we come together in praise and worship, Lord, and we lend you our ears and our heart, Lord, we pray that it is sacrifice to you, pleasant aroma unto you, Father, that you would meet us right here in this place. God, we have some hurting people. God, we have some lonely people. We have some depressed. That, Lord, whatever they're going through right now, and we're praying the Holy Spirit yes. come in and set us free in the name of Jesus. Amen. God, we love you, and we thank you, and we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And if you agree with me, would you just say amen? Amen. amen. Come on, how many's ready for some church this morning? Amen. amen. Put your hands together, and let's sing and lift up the name of Jesus together. How many is ready to leave this whole world down here? It yes, could be, amen. you know, this could be the year. This could be the year. So, laying up my treasures in that home above, trusting fully, trusting in the Savior's love. What I can do, holding up. I'm getting ready to leave this world.
can't keep a good drummer down. Amen. That's right. <laughs> There's a happy land of promise. going to be happy when we get up there to see him face to face but there ain't no reason we can't be happy while we're here down here too amen right. we serve a risen savior yeah, you can go do. around you can find buddha's bones you can find all uh, bones you can find all these people's bones but you can't find jesus's bones because he's not That's there right, no more amen. he's living hallelujah sitting on the right hand of god and i'm here to tell you something we got something to be happy about yeah. Celebrating and shouting the name of Jesus. He's coming to get his church here soon. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many is just happy in the Lord this Amen. morning? Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to give you an opportunity to give and tithe and offering. And uh, this is just, we got, we got our offering plates up here at the front. If you'd like to bring it, back, uh, bring it by and drop it off in the offering plate, that's fine. But we also have a uh, cash app for those that may not know. Um, that you can give on there. The tag there is um, uh, uh, hashtag capital A Abundant Life Give. Um, if you'd like to give on the 
Cash App, but also you can mail it in at 127 Jessica Lane, Brooklyn, Arkansas. All of those options goes into the account, and that's just the information for those that may not know. Brother Tony does such a very good job. He's got a lot of that information already up there on TVs, and it's also online on Facebook. So we just want to say uh, we are very grateful, very, very grateful. You have blessed tremendously blessed us uh, on giving to the kingdom of God here at Abundant Life, and it has gone to do a, quite a bit of things here at the church. And so we're very happy to see what God has in store for us. So um, those are your options. Once you give th this morning, give your tithe. Anything more than that is offering. Let's go to the Lord in prayer for it. Father, we thank you so much, God, that you have blessed us, Lord. You are continually blessing your people, Lord, and we are always in your favor. And, Father, I just pray at this time, Lord, whatever it is that has been given, God, that you would multiply it. God, that you would bless it, Lord, that it be for your kingdom, Lord, forward in your kingdom here on earth in Paragould, Arkansas. Pray that you bless the hand that's able to give, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, let's do a little bit more singing. Well, the wind... Glad he said that. Yeah. We got a birthday we want to celebrate. It's Ashley's birthday. Okay, I didn't know if she was going to say it or not. So we want to celebrate our happy birthday. Sing happy birthday to her.
happy birthday, Ashley. Y'all be sure to let her know uh, happy birthday when you see her. She's back here. <laughs> How many's got joy? Amen. Amen. I, I, I know, I, I know I have, and I know you probably have too, prayed for some joy. Or prayed, let me say it like this, we prayed for strength. Lord, here I am. God, I feel like I'm here all the time asking for prayer, asking for strength, God. I've met my limit, God, and I, you said you wouldn't put no more on me than I can handle. We're, we're praying for strength and praying for strength. But the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. You say, well, Brother Dwayne, I, 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 don't, I don't understand how that helps my situation. There's something that happens when we take the things that we're dealing with and we realize there's nothing I can do about it. We realize I can try fighting this on my own strength or I can let it go and put it in God's hands. And when we do that, when we finally realize, God, I need your help and we can give it away, there's a joy that starts coming up. And I don't know about you, but I need some joy. Well, wouldn't it be something when the devil tries to get you down, you just smile right back in his face. When the devil tries to come into your life and throw another obstacle or throw another wall in your way, you just look at him with a smile on his face and say, greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. I already have the win winning Savior. I already have the risen Savior that lives inside of me. And I'm not going to let you get me down. You can throw all your darts. You can swing every sword. But it don't matter because I got a stronger sword that says that I can cast all my cares upon him for he cares for me hallelujah so I, I pray this morning that you can find joy in the Lord this morning because that's where you're going to find your strength amen that's where you're going to find your strength that doesn't mean that you're going to go walking on the sidewalk with a song in your head with a bopping down the sidewalk with a smile on your face that's not joy that's happiness joy's different joy's what carries you even through the hard times joy's what keeps your mind on what is to come hallelujah how many need some joy this morning father in the name of jesus God, you see each and every one of us. You know each and every situation and circumstance we're in. And God, we find joy in this. That you said you'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. And you'll go with us even to the ends of the earth, Lord. Holy Spirit, there's some broken hearts here. But you're a mender of broken hearts. God, there are some sick people here, but you're a healer. By your stripes, we are healed, Lord. And God, we just pray that the great comforter in the name of Jesus come and meet us right here in this place this morning. God, that he would just begin to move in this place, touching and unifying us together as one. God, we pray that healing would take place in the troubled waters this morning, God. As we just lift our hands in confidence in you, in faith in you, in faith that you're working everything out, Lord. We lift our hands and we praise you this morning, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, can we do that all over the building? Just lift your hands where you're at. Come on, let's worship God as Sister Christy leads us. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do what only you can do. Let's sing that again. Come on. Oh, do what only you can do. With one word, the mountains move. Oh. 
Somebody needs this this morning. There is life. There's life. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. There's liberty. Come on. There is freedom. Like a river running wild. Like a never ending fire. Where the Spirit of the Come on, Lord is. Let's do that again right there. Come on. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. Grab a hold of There is life. With the Spirit Just let the Holy Lord Spirit is. minister to you this morning. There Hallelujah. is freedom like a river running yes, yes, like a never ending fire. Can we do it with the Spirit of the Lord? Is. And with the Spirit of the Lord, is. there is life where the Spirit. Like a river running wild, like a never ending fire, where the Spirit of the Lord is. Come on, just lift your hands all over the building, Lord. God, we let the Holy Spirit just minister to us right now in the name of Jesus. God, your Holy Spirit is what gives us life, your Holy Spirit is what gives us freedom. Lord, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, God. Lord, there's people here. Lord, I'm standing in the need of prayer, God. Needing the Holy Spirit just to minister to me, Lord. And God, there's others here, Lord. Continue to minister, God. We feel you in this place, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah.
do that again. Come on. Oh, healing is here. Yes, it is. Healing is here. Oh, healing is here. And I receive. Trust in you. Oh, freedom is here. Oh, freedom is here. Oh, freedom is here. And I. Come on, somebody, this is for you right now. Come oh, on. Oh, yeah. oh, freedom is here.
and I receive. Come on. Yes, Jesus. Oh, healing is here. Oh, healing is here. Come on. Freedom is here. Come on. Freedom is here. Oh, freedom is here. And I receive it. Come on. Come on. I lift my can we do that? To the heavens, I lift my eyes where my help comes from. I look to you, my rock, my healer. I trust in I trust in you. Do you trust in Sickness can stay any longer Your perfect love is casting out fear And you are the God of all power And it is your will that my life is healed oh, come on, come Somebody on. sing that over your life Sickness can't stay any longer your perfect love is casting out fear. You are the God. And you are the God of all power. And it is your will that my life is here. Somebody proclaim it this morning. And it is your will that my life is here. Come on, proclaim it this morning. And it is your will that my life is here. Yes, she Lord, it is your will that my life is here. your hands toward heaven and thank God for his healing power and his healing virtue. It's here today. Father, we love you. We praise you. We give you honor. We give you glory. God, you're faithful. God, no matter what we face, what we go through, God, you are the God that healeth us. God, you are the God that healeth us. God, you are the God that healeth us. No matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, God, no matter what's going on, you are the God that healeth us. 
We stand upon that today. We proclaim that today, God. We believe it today. God, we worship you today. We thank you for it, God. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Amen, amen. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Come on, we can do better than that. I said, aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen, amen. This is a good day to be in God's house. Amen. Would you let Sister Candace know how much you appreciate her as she takes her children's to children's church today? Amen. And if you're new here, just just follow this pretty young lady with a brown vest on, and uh, she'll she'll take care of you and make sure that Sister Candace grab these if you don't mind. We're so honored to have our guest with us today. We're honored and thank God for you and appreciate you for being in the house with us today. Amen. Good to have Courtney Brookings. Is that right? Did I say that right? And her family. And I believe this is mom with you. We're honored, honored today to have you with us in our service. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. And uh, so glad to have home folk with us. And we want to say, as already been said, Happy birthday to Ashley, and uh, I, uh, I said to my wife the other day, I said, uh, is Ashley 30 years old today? And uh, she corrected me on that, told me it was a year or two farther than that. But uh, this is our oldest daughter, you know that by now, and we're so proud of her. She's been sick and uh, had that old bronchitis, but she's doing good, good, and the Lord has touched her and, and ministered to her body. And, and so we just praise God that, that the healing touch has been upon her. Amen. And we thank God for you. I'm looking forward. Anybody looking forward? I'm not looking backward. I'm, I'm not looking back at that at all. I'm looking forward, amen, to what the Lord has in store for us in the year to come. And... Uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm believing God for some good things in our church this year and uh, just trusting God to do something special this year. And I, I believe He's going to. I believe He's already began it. Amen. I believe He has. Um, back on the table in the foyer, you that are, are joining with us, uh, I said I wasn't going to mention this anymore, but you that are joining with us on our fast is a calendar. And uh, we put together a calendar for a couple of reasons, and um, we're going to we're we're doing a 21 day fast. Just just you you just obey God in it. And uh, first 21 days of this year, we're going to pray, and uh, probably press on through the 31st day. That's a whole month of January. But um, um, for for three weeks, we're gonna we're gonna just reach out and touch heaven. First week, we're going to pray concerning personal growth. And uh, how many believes that we need personal growth? Uh, you will not have any spiritual growth unless you have some personal growth. And that all works hand in hand. And, uh, and so uh, that's going to be our first week. And um, we already began that Friday and, and, and Saturday we already began. And in this calendar, there are certain things that we're going to pray about. And uh, the first week, we're going we're gonna to pray about our personal growth uh, starting Friday uh, those that started Friday, we begin to pray, and we begin to pray that God would give us spiritual hunger. Amen. Give us spiritual hunger. That's what we begin to pray about in our scripture for that day was Ephesians 1, 18 through 19. Now, let me say this. Even if you're not wanting to join in on this fast, maybe you have reasons that you can't, but you want to join us in prayer and Bible study, grab one of these. It's on the table out there in the foyer. Amen. As you leave, just, just grab it. If we don't have enough, we'll make more. Um, Saturday, Saturday our, our prayer was for a revelation of God's love. I believe with all of my heart, we won't be able to express the love of Christ until we know the love of Christ. Amen. Does that make any sense? And so we begin to pray for the love of God, revelation of God's love. Our scripture reading was Ephesians three sixteen and 19. Today... Our prayer for today is commitment to God. God, make us committed. Hello? God, make us committed. And our scripture reading for today is Second Chronicles 16 and 9. 
And I'm not going to read all these to you, but uh, it just goes on from there. And then starting the 8th will be our second week into our prayer time and our fasting time. And that week is going to be a prayer and fasting for our church. We're going to pray for our church. And um, and uh, the biggest reason you ought to pray for your church is the first day of the second week. You need to pray for your pastors. <laughs> Amen. And uh, I desire your prayers. And I, I got this old slogan that I say sometimes it gets me in trouble. I need the prayer and you need to practice. Oh, we got quiet there. Amen. I need the prayer and you need to practice. And so so we're going to start the second week just praying for the church. And there's there's seven specific things there we're going to pray about. The last week, we're going to pray about outreach. We're going, we're going to begin to pray that God would just help us in outreach. And that, that's in work and school and our neighborhood. We're going to pray for elected officers, whether you like them or not. The Bible says you pray for them. And we're going to pray for missionary, missionaries and relationships and freedom and, and favor and so on. So that's, that's, in, that's in there on the, on the table right inside the door. The four-year, I think there's 15 or 20 of those. Uh, we can make more. If, we, if it looks like we're running out, somebody just grab uh, one of our leadership team and said, we need more, and we can throw that on a copy machine and just zip. We got that done. And uh, it's, it just works. It just works that way. And uh, thank God. Thank God for that. Amen. And uh, so we're looking forward. And this year, we're working on some things for this year. One of the, one of the um, targeting areas that uh, I'm praying and seeking God and working toward this year is our millennial group. And uh, that's from the age of 20 to 40. And we're gonna we're gonna work on starting a millennial group, and uh, that it will meet may may meet in a home, and may we may rotate it in homes, we may meet here to church, uh, just for that age group, and uh, we're gonna reach out to that age group and see if we can't target that group, and uh, really pour into them, and uh, and so uh, that's that's what we're gonna we're look at, we're looking at this year to get our our ladies group. Uh, in movement and effective our men's group um, we're looking into that as well in a great way i'm sharing these things with you now because my message has nothing to do with any of this and uh, so I'm, I'm sharing this with you now because when i get into the message you'll you'll say wow man I, brother Dwayne said pastor was going to come up here and preach to us about vision and, and uh well you know you, you learn me by now that I'm going to preach what I feel like Lord lays on my heart for the hour. And that's what I, that's what I feel like Lord has directed me to do. So these are some things that, that we're working on this week. This week, we're pressing toward our new youth building. This week, we're, we're, we're going to get things rolling in that direction. And, uh, and so we can get, yeah, <clears throat> so we can get that facility finished and, and uh, there's there's no reason why we can't. And so um, on on that end of the property, you'll see the building with the garage door on it. That garage door is going to go. Um, you say, well, you got one on this end, this end. We left it for mission outreach. And for us this year, Brother Dwayne, we're going to have a 18-wheeler come that's bringing food this year. I'm talking about an 18-wheeler full of food that's going to show up here on this property, and we're going to give it out. We're just going to give it away to the community, and uh, um, Brother Wayne is working on making that happen, and so uh, we're looking forward to that, and that that's the reason why when we, we bought this property, we didn't take out that bay door. It's because it gives us an opportunity to minister outside of it, and uh, it, we can bring our goods in where it's dry, and uh, also where it's warm for us that's cold-natured, and uh, so... Um, um, that's, that's, uh, but, um, the bay door on that end is going to go and, uh, that building is going to be made to look just like the rest of the building. And, uh, we're fixing to bring in a storage building and to get everything out of there so we can begin to blow that thing open. And, uh, boy, I'm looking forward to that. And so we're, we're pressing toward that mark. And so that's going to happen. I'm believing I'm believing in the early months of 2021, we're going to be in that building. I'm believing that. 
All I need for the rest of you and your pocketbooks to believe that with me. Amen. And uh, if we can get on board with that, then we can see it happen. We, we can see it happen. And so um, I, I want to say thank you for that. And you, this is a, one of the uh, – I pastored for 33 years. Boy, that don't sound right, but I pastored for 33 years. I have pastored, let's say, four churches in 33 years. This is my fourth church. And I can tell you that this is the best giving church I've ever pastored, honest to God. Right now, it's the smallest church I've ever pastored, but it is the best giving out of the church that run over a hundred in attendance. Amen. This church outgives that church, and that speaks volumes, volumes. And you guys see the, you see the, you see the need. You you understand that it takes finances for ministry to go forward and. Uh, um, now we, we do pay some staff here. Uh, I don't take a penny and, uh, I don't want to at this point of our journey, probably won't until God takes us home. And the reason I don't, I'd rather sow right back into the ministry. We have other staff that help me that we do pay them. And, uh, and we just, we just thank God, thank God for his ability to do so. Amen. So. We want you to get involved, get involved in all these new ministries. And uh, now I need, I need somebody, I need somebody to begin to pray about our uh, um, millennial group. I need somebody to begin to pray about that. Now, I feel like God's put somebody on my heart, but I want God to confirm it. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I, I want God to confirm it. And, uh, and so... Um, I'm just, I want you to, maybe your heart was just touched when I said that. And uh, same thing with our men's group. I need, I need some, I believe God's put something on my heart, but I need, I need a confirmation. Same thing with our ladies group. And uh, so uh, I, I just want you to come to me and say, hey, Pastor, I, I want to I pray about this in this period of time. And at the end of this period of time, I got an answer for you. And, uh, and so we're going we're gonna to see our church go forward for the kingdom of God. I want you to go with me this morning in the book of Genesis. <clears throat> and I would have picked, the Lord would have took me to the place in Genesis that has some of the biggest, strangest, weirdest names for me to try to pronounce. And I can't pronounce half of them. And I wouldn't even try reading this part unless I thought it was important, but I believe it's important. So I'm going to do my best to, I'm gonna, if, you're, if you're a professor of Bible words, leave me alone as I get them wrong, okay? After church, you, if you want to talk to me how they are, are supposed to be said, um, then we'll talk about it. But uh, uh, I, have no, I have no theology, never been to theology, but I've been to neology, and so we're going to just take it by that. Amen. Genesis 14, verse number 1. And it came to pass in the days... Of Amraphel, how about that name? King of Shinar, Arioch, King of Elazer, Chedde or Lomer, how about that one? King of Elam, and Tidal, King of Nations, that these made war with Bera, King of Sodom, and with Basha, King of Gomorrah. Shinab, king of Adma, and Shimabur, king of Zebulun, and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. Now, you ought to right now thank God for your name. Hey, man, I used to hate Marty, but I'm beginning to like it as I read these names. And these were joined together in the vale of Sodom, which is in the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Ched or Lamur. And in the thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year came Chedel Lamur, and the king that were with him, and smote the Rephiums, and the Ashtroths, and Karnath, Karnum, and the Zuzums, and Sheva, and Carathium, and the Horites, and the Mount of Seor, and to Ephraim, which is by the wilderness. 
And they returned and came to En Mispeth, which is Kadesh, and smote all the count, uh, country of the Amalekites, and also the Amorites that dwelled in Hazan Matimar. And there went out the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, the king of Adama, the king of Zebulun, the king of Beliah, the same in Zorah. And they joined battle with them in the vale of Sodom. And Chida Orlim, the king of Elam, and with Tado, the king of nations, and Amrathal, the king of Shamar, and Aratok, the king of Elisar, four kings with five. And the vale of Sodom was full of slippets. And the king of Sodom of Gomorrah fled and fell there, and there they remained fled to the mountain. And there stood all the goods of Sodom, and they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. And they took, they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. And there, were, there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorites, brother of Eschol, the brother of Aner. And there was, con, con, there was confederate with Abram. Whew. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, this is what I want you to look at. When Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed and trained servants. When Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 300 and 18, and they pursued them unto Dan. He divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them and pursued them, pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back, oh, I like that, all the goods, not some, all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, his goods, and the women also, and the people. And the king of Sodom went out to meet after his return from the slaughter of Cheetah or Lomiter, <laughs> and of the kings that were with him in the valley of Sheba, which is in the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, said, and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Boy, that makes me want to run. And blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithe of all. You that say tithe is not in the Old Testament, there you go. And the king of Sodom said to Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. I love Abram. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hands unto the Lord, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread, even to a shoe latchet that I will, not, I will not take anything that is thine, lest you should say, I have made Abraham rich, Abram rich, save only that which the young man have eaten and the portion of the men which went with me, Aner, Ishkal, and Mamre. Let them take portions. I really felt the Lord 
not so much in reading all those big words, but uh, I really felt the Lord this week talk to me about a scripture I've never seen before. And that scripture is where Abram heard about Lot being taken captive and his family. And Abram armed his trained servants. It was not, they was not trained to be soldiers. They were servants. But he armed them and trained them. In the beginning of this year, I want to talk to you about today, especially from a servant to a soldier. From a servant to a soldier. Amen. We've been servants for a long time, but I think it's about time we become soldiers in the army of God. Father, I love you today. I thank you for the reading of the word. God, it's all important. I do not make light of any of it, God. God, I come to you today asking for your help. I'm asking, God, that you would direct us in the path that you'd want us to go today. Help me, God, not rush what you would want to say. But, God, also help me not be a waster of time. God, help me to be careful and cautious. But at the same time, give me boldness to speak the truth without fear nor favor. Father, I believe it's time for us to stand up and be accounted for. God, we need to know who's on the Lord's side. And, Father, I believe you're looking for that as well. We love you now. We thank you for it. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. How have your way, Jesus? In reading this, now I don't know how many times throughout the year that I've not took count. Many have took count. Are you hot? Some are fanning. I, I've not took count on how many times that I um, read through the Bible. I don't, I don't know how many times I've no, not took count, but through the, through the years I've, I've read this passage of Scripture on multiple times, and I probably got tangled up in those big words as we kind of often do sometimes, and uh, especially when you get into the begets. When you get into the begets, we kind of get lost in the begets, don't we? You know what I'm talking about? And, but um, I, I don't know that I've ever, ever seen this before, Brother Jacob. I don't think I've ever seen this Scripture. And, and when I was reading this passage of Scripture, I will have to admit to you, I almost didn't get to it because I was so tangled up in those big words that you heard me struggling t trying to pronounce. And, and, and I, I'm in my own flesh, I kind of wanted to just go on somewhere else, but I felt kind of hung there by the Lord. I felt like the Lord was wanting to show me something, and boy, was I right. Because hidden in the Scripture, you'll find truths that sometimes will just absolutely just blow your mind it'll just amaze you at what god does and the way god does it it's not been a secret that god has always used people who were very unqualified anybody know what i'm talking about uh, god has always used people who were very much unqualified and and uh, we we know that uh, for sure we know that God does that. And I understand that um, sometimes we feel like that God couldn't possibly use us, but I want to remind you of, of some things this morning as I get into this word that God uses who he chooses. Uh, you may not like it, but God uses who he chooses. And I can tell you that uh, he used Noah, and Noah was known to get drunk. He used Abram, and Abram was an old man when God called him, to, told him he needed to leave his country, 75 years old, when God spoke, first spoke to Abram and said, you need to leave your country. So some of us may feel like we're too old and we can't be used. And, uh, but I'm here to tell you, you can. Isaac was a daydreamer. 
And uh, I've dealt with a whole bunch of those in my life, and, and I've been one of those, and, and I've been told that I was a dreamer more than one on one occasion. But Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. He was known to tell untruths. Amen. And I don't want to say this one because we have a, a Leah in the building today, and uh, this Leah is beautiful. But the Leah in the Bible was ugly. Amen. But God still used her. Joseph was abused. But God still used him. Moses had a stuttering problem. But God used him. Gideon was fearful and afraid. But God used him mightily. Samson had long hair and was a womanizer. But God used him. Even Gideon, even I mean, I guess I said that Rahab was a prostitute, but God used her. Jeremiah and Timothy, but were both too young, but God used them mightily. David was an adulterer and a murderer, but God used him. Elijah was suicidal, but God used him. Isaiah preached naked one time. But God used him. Jonah ran from God, but God used him. Naomi was a widow, yet God still used her. Job went bankrupt, but God still showed up and used him. John was a strange character who ate bugs and wore coats made of animals, yet God used him mightily. Peter denied Christ. Oh, but after Pentecost, we find God using Peter in a great way. The disciples fell asleep while praying, yet we find that God still used them. Martha worried about everything, but God loved and still used Martha. The Samaritan woman was divorced more than once. But God still used the Samaritan woman. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul was too religious. Timothy had an ulcer. And Lazarus was dead. But God used them all. I wonder today if any of these might have fit your category of life where you stand today. Amen. I think we all fit in that category somewhere. Amen. I don't know where you fit, but uh, I find myself fitting in there. Amen. And uh, I know that I'm encouraged today to know that I'm still usable. Now, here we find in our reading, Abram on one of his journeys. And he's traveling because God told him he needed to travel. You need to take up. You need to lead your home, home folk. You need to leave your family. You need to go to a land that I tell you of. In other words, you'll not know that you have arrived until I tell you you have arrived. Man, what a journey that had to be. I don't like to go nowhere that I don't know where I'm going. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. I want to know where, how to get there. Before we go anywhere, I get out a, a, a map. I'll, I'll Google it. I'll do whatever I can. I'll figure out the best route. Amen. And then we have learned to depend upon, amen, that, uh, that uh, what's it called? Navigation system that we all have, GPS system, that got me and my wife so tangled up and lost in in Missouri that we were beginning to hear banjo music. And I'm telling you, buddy, we got in the backwoods of Missouri. And that goofy GPS kept saying to us, at first opportunity, make a legal U-turn. There's no such a thing as a legal U-turn. You go ahead and tell that police officer, the GPS, Lola on GPS said, that I can make a legal U-turn and see what he tells you. There's no such a thing. We had to stop and ask somebody that had some sense 
to get us back on right track. Amen. And uh, the gentleman, an old country gentleman, looked at me and laughed at me and said, Sir, you're way off the path. And I was like, you don't have to tell me that, man. I understand that. But all of us want to know where we're going and when we're going to get there. Amen. Nothing drove parents any crazier than having children in the back seat with that famous question, are we there yet? Amen. Are we there yet? Amen. And none of us have have really enjoyed that question, and we've answered it multitude of time. And uh, but I'm here to tell you, Abram was not given the privilege of knowing where God was taking him. He just knew God said it's time to go. And sometimes walking by faith is hard. For ten years, longer than that, probably. I've been writing a book, and I'm on, I have made I have made a, a prayer to God this year that I can finish it. Will y'all help me pray that? Amen. I've been working on it. I've been working on it, and and I pray this year. But the but but the title, if the Lord allows it to stay that way, is walking in faith in the dark. Amen. It's easy to walk in faith when when you know where you're going. Now that's not really faith. That's sight, but. But you know what I'm saying. And uh, Abram had to trust God. And so on his journeys, he's journeying. And uh, word comes to him that war has broke loose. And uh, they've already picked out their spot. Lot looked upon the well-watered plains of Sodom and chose to go there, even though we know that Sodom was not a good place to be. Amen. But, but we know that Lot looked at that well-watered plain, it looked good from a distance. And I want to say something there. Just because it looks good don't mean it's where you need to be. And we find that Lot went there and, and Abram began to journey on as God would lead him. But word come, and I always like it. Brother Dwayne, it seems like the enemy always lets one loose to go tell the story. Have you, have you ever noticed that? And... Uh, and uh, but they come and they 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 took Lot. They invaded Sodom and they took Lot and his family and and they took all of his possessions and they took all the goods and they left. <laughs> Even the enemy didn't want to stay in Sodom. Oh, some of y'all get that a little bit. But anyway, they left. And uh, but it says there there came one that had escaped. That reminds me of of the story of Job. Don't that remind you of the story of Job? Uh, everything that happened, one happened to escape and run and told Job the bad news and told him the story. But but uh, it said one escaped and came, came and told Abram, the Hebrew, and a man that he, when he was in the plain of Mamre, the Amorites, a man, and he, he told him, he said, he told him, he said, Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive. It was his brother's son that was taken captive. He armed and he trained servants. Nowhere have I ever found in the Bible where God called Abram to be a general. Nowhere. Nowhere have I found in the Bible where God called Abram to be a captain of a host of of the army of Syria or some great host of, of an army anywhere. But when Abram heard that his brother was in trouble and everything had been taken, something inside of him began to burn and began to rise up. And he began to wonder, what can I do? And so he called together all of those servants in his house. Now, this blowed my hat in the creek. Amen. It, 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 don't, it don't take a whole lot to do that. But, man, when, when I read that in Abram's house, now I want you to know, he's on a caravan. He's traveling, following God, wherever God leads him. And you study it out. God led him to several different cities. And I see you right now, it's going, I'm, this might be a part one, part two. So, but, but God led him to several different cities and several different different destinations but when i read what abram had in his house he man abram 
had there in, in his house, amen, 318 servants. Wow, 318 servants following you at just the voice of God. My, my, amen. Wouldn't that be a great church? Amen. 300, 318 people that had chose to go with Abraham wherever you go, wherever the Lord leads you. If you say we're going, we're going. If you say that's what we're doing, we're doing. If that's the next city, we're going to. I'm talking about a caravan of people that had stuck with him. And what I liked about this, it said, uh, it said that they, a lot of these were born in his house. Did you see that? A lot of these were born in his house, and then they had grown up in, in his house, and they become knit with Abraham. Amen. And they they were they become family. And so when Abram heard that his nephew Lot was in trouble and his family was in trouble and the possessions were gone and there was a war going on, I read to you all those crazy names of all those tribes and all those armies that were fighting. He man knowing, I read them all, not knowing how to pronounce those names, but you got to understand that all of those were, were champions and warriors and they were fighting. And here is a lone man just following after God and God speaks to him, amen, when When word comes to him, he may in fact not that's not how that is to God. He even puts the trust in his family in this and uh word comes to him about how they can stay strict and proud in the very thing they had. We find Abram gathering together his household and and he's speaking to his household and he's saying to them, he said, Your servant. Them. Thank you. you got to figure it out this time. All right. He said he trained them. Amen. Well, he trained them in the matters of warfare. Amen. He, he trained them. Brother Wayne, just turn it down a little bit. He trained them in a the matter of warfare. Amen. He he told them, he said, no, no longer, no longer are you going to be waiting on tables. Give me some monitors, but turn the house down. No longer are you going to be waiting on tables. Tables. No longer do I want you to carry around a basin with water. No longer do I want you to running after me or they with food and, and things of that nature, but I want you to go find you a sword. Now that also also made my mind just a little bit, Brother Chris, go to wondering a little bit where they come up with 318 swords. Does anybody else mind work like my mind? I hope not. This would be a crazy church. But but my mind works. Where did they come up with 318 swords? Where did they come up with the weapons to go to battle? Amen. Where did they come up with all of this? But he said he, he divided unto them. Amen. He said that uh, that he, he went after the army. Amen. He divided himself against them. He and his servants by night and smote them on the left hand of Damascus. 
in verse number 16, it said, and he brought back. How many is ready to take back what the enemy has robbed from you? I, I don't know about you, but this year has been a year of thievery and robbery from the enemy. But I'm ready for the servants of God to say, we're ready to be soldiers of God. Amen. And we're ready to take weapons and go to warfare and fight and take back everything the enemy has robbed from me. Now I want you to notice that God used amateur servants uh, to become soldiers. Uh, God didn't pull out some army. God didn't bring in some some great uh, ambushment from some great tribe but God used men and women who were willing to put off what they were and take on a new nature and say I'm no longer a servant but now I'm a soldier in the army of God now I like it I, I don't know about you but I like it it said he brought back not some of the goods but he brought back all the goods now that's an amazing uh, uh, task in itself. Uh, Abraham said, I'm going to leave here till I get everything uh, you've took from them. Uh, I'm not leaving here till I get back every possession. I'm not leaving anything behind. Uh, I'm taking everything back. He also brought back uh, his brother Lot, uh, his goods, uh, his women, uh, and his people. Amen. Can I tell you? Amen. There's been some people of God, amen, that has been hit uh, by the enemy and been attacked by the enemy from all sides. Uh, and they're looking for somebody to become a soldier on their behalf uh, and fight the fight uh, and stand up and pursue God uh, with everything they got. Uh, now I'm here to tell you there's nothing about me that wants to fight. Uh, I don't have the nature inside of me. I've never been a fighter. That hurts. I don't enjoy it. Uh, amen. I've never been a fighter. Uh, amen. But several years ago, a man tried to break in my home. Amen. It was just at the time, my wife uh, and we had one daughter at that time, Ashley. Amen. And a man tried to break in my home. Uh, the first thing he tried to do was steal my car. Uh, amen. And you about had to know the combination to make that thing start so that wasn't likely going to happen to start with and, and my lord he had to be drunk or he surely could have found a better car but I heard him my dog towed off on him and then I heard him trying to slam the door on my old Chevy Nova car amen if you know anything about them old Chevy Novas the doors weighed more than the car did and, amen and, and he's out there trying to slam that thing and and uh, it was it was something else and you'd drive down the road in that old car and, and honest to God God, truth, my wife is a witness. We'd hit a bump. The door would come open and the windshield wipers would go. And this guy was trying to steal something like that. And then he made the mistake to try to break in my house. Told you I've never been a fighter. I've never been one that done that. I didn't like it in school. I tried my best to avoid it. Amen. I prob you probably could count on one hand, probably with two fingers, the times I've been in some type of fight in my life. It's amazing because of the mouth that I had. But anyway, he, that's just a miracle in itself. Uh, but this man jumped up on my porch and was coming in my front door. And I met him at the front door. And when I jerked the door open, he was coming coming in, and I popped him right smack in the mouth with everything I had. Amen. I wasn't there to win him to Christ. It wasn't nothing like that at the moment. I'll pray for him later. Amen. But at that moment, he was coming in my house. He was coming in to do harm. And all I thought was, at that moment, I stand between my wife and my little girl. And for you to get in here between my wife and my little girl, you got to come through me. I hit him so hard that I knocked him off the porch. He hit my old Chevy Nova and slid down on the ground and grabbed his face and said call the police and I thought huh that was a good idea what did I think of that uh, amen but he took off running and some folk across the street wound up chasing him down the road with some pool sticks and beating him over the head amen kind of tells you the neighborhood that we lived in but but anyway uh, the long story short uh, my mother got 
very upset at me. My mother said, son, you beat all I ever seen. That man could have had a gun. That man could have had a knife. That man could have brought harm to you and, and Karen and Ashley. And I said, mom, I'm going to tell you, he might have. He could have. But the only thing I knew, the only person standing between them and him was me. And somebody needed to stand up. And folk, I'm going to tell you, that's the same attitude that Abraham, Abram had concerning Lot, a man and his family. He said, I'm the only person standing here between them and them being captives and them maybe being destroyed and them being stripped and robbed. So I'm going to arm everybody I got and we're going to march into the enemy's camp and we're going to take back every single thing the enemy stole from them. I wish we had a go get attitude in this place today. Amen. That we would say in our spirit, uh, preacher, no more will we let the enemy run rampant over our life, uh, but we're going to stand up and be a fighter for the kingdom of heaven. Abram said, I'm going to send a message. I'm not going to send a a call to anyone. I'm not going to, I'm going to use what I got. I'm going to use what I got. And so he gathered them together. You find some that were just pot washers. That's all I've ever known. They've just been a pot washer. Amen. Some was just sweepers. Some were cooks. Some were caretakers of the flock. Amen. Some, some could have been, I don't know, they did in the, in the Bible days. Some could have been, could have been those iron workers that made the tools and prepared the tools. I, I don't know all the tasks that there was, but I can tell you there was none of them soldiers. Amen. They were all servants. And the biggest majority of them was born in that house. Born in, in, in Abram's community there. They become servants of Abram. And so Abram began to equip them and, and take them to battle. I want this to be a year of equipping. Hello? I want this year to be a year of equipping. Leadership, let's get together. Let's get our heads together. Let's let's get a game plan how we can how we can equip our people to be fighters, not runners. Hello, somebody that we can equip our leaders. We can equip our we equip our people to be be champions and not defeated. We can equip our our people to be victors and not victims. Uh, anybody know what I'm talking about? We've had a victim for so long that we don't know what the victory really is. Uh, amen. But I'm going to tell you, I believe that in 2021, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know uh, what's going to happen. Amen. My confidence is not what's going to happen at the White House or the Governor's Mansion or anything else. Uh, my confidence is in Jesus Christ and Him alone. And I'm going to tell you, if He be for you, then who can be against you? Amen. But God's looking for some servants uh, that say, God, I don't want to be just a servant. God, I'm also willing to be a, a soldier in the army of God. God used people who others thought were unworthy to be used. Now, you, you'll find in the book of Exodus in, in 3 and, and 1 through 22, and, and, and this is a bunch of scriptures, and, and I, 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 won't, I won't run through them all. I don't have time. And, and I'll, even though Brother Tony has put them up, and I don't... I don't I'm sorry, I don't mean to disrespect for his hard work. I appreciate that, but because of time. But I just want to tell you where they're at. They're in, they're in Exodus 3, 1 through 22. And I ask you to bring notebooks and pens and write things down, even this year. And, and, and let's, let's study. Let's be students of the Word. Can we be, I'm trying to equip us. And the way you become equipped is be students of the Word. And so, but you'll find that Moses, here at this time in his life, was nothing but... A shepherd. In this time in his life. The first uh, four, five, six words of the first verse that I give you tells what Moses does. Now he's not even taking care of his own flock. He don't have a flock. He's working for somebody else. And he's working for mama-in-law and father-in-law. Amen. He's working for his father-in-law, Jethro. And, and so... So Moses has said he kept the flock. That, that's where he was. Now we know that, that Moses had some of the best training. We mo know that Moses had some of the best teaching. We know that Moses is there. The reason he's there, can somebody tell me why he's even there? 
Why is Moses where he's at? Because he fled. He, he committed a murder. He, he committed a murder. He took his own hands and he killed a man and, and he fled. And now he's on the backside of the desert. And now he just forgot all about all the teachings, all the trainings, all those things. He, man, Moses spent, he spent 40 years trying to figure out who he was. And now he's trying to figure out in these 40 years, he's trying to figure out what, what he is. And, and so he's back there, and he's just a shepherd. Now, he's just back there tending the sheep. He's just back, back there going through the daily rituals and the daily routine. And, and, and it, was just a, it was just a job. Amen. Now, it was a job that took care of Moses and his, his family, but, but it wasn't the calling. It was a job. There's a difference in a job and a calling. Hello? Amen. This is not a job to me. This is a calling. This is a calling. And so, so Moses has ran from his calling and is doing a job. And so he's back here just doing this job. He's back here taking care of sheep. He's back here beating off wolves. And he's back here beating off wild beasts. And he's back here dragging in sheep that wander astray. Back here taking care of their wounds. He's taking, he's making sure that little ones are being birthed right. And he's taking all, he's doing all the things a good shepherd is supposed to do. One day he wanders out a little bit in the distance. He finds a good grazing ground for his sheep. And so he leads them out in the grazing ground out there where they are. And he's just a shepherd and he's out there and he's just watching over his sheep. All of a sudden, a bush starts burning. It wasn't uncommon in the desert in this time for a bush to catch on fire. But he noticed something about this bush. It just wasn't burning up. It was just burning. It wasn't burning up. It was just burning. And he, Mo, and Moses looked at it and he said, why is this bush not consumed? The fire's not going out. The fire, I've seen this happen before. If you talk to Moses, this is the words he would say to you. I've seen this happen before. It's not the first time. I've seen a bush combust and just burn and go out. He said, it's not uncommon, but this time there's something different about the bush. So I will go and see. <laughs> Amen. I will go and see why the bush is not consumed. All of a sudden, the attention of Moses is taken off of what he was there to do and now something new has got his attention. A consuming fire, a fire burning has got his attention. And so he walks over, goes over. I don't know if it was a quarter mile. I don't know if it was a few steps. I don't know where it was. But anyway, it got his attention. He went to it. He had evidently watched it for a little while. And he went to it and he got there near it. And all of a sudden there come a voice out of that bush. That would have been the time that I went back to Jethro's house swiftly, quickly. Forget the sheep. When bushes start talking to me, I panic. Now, y'all looking like that wouldn't happen to y'all. Amen. You go out in your yard and your head starts talking to you, you're going to go into a panic. And somebody's going to say to you, you've took too, way too much medicine. And so all of a sudden, this bush begins to talk. And the bush says unto Moses, he said, Moses, I need you to take off your shoes. Listen to this. He said, I need you to take off the shoes for the ground in which you stand on is holy ground. What made it holy ground? You can't tell me Moses hadn't been there before. You can't tell me that those sheep hadn't grazed on that land before. But when the fire, when the presence of Jehovah God shows up and makes himself real, wherever that is, it's holy ground. Amen. It was a custom any time you to somebody's home, especially somebody of prevalence, somebody of, of great uh, greatness, uh, the first thing you done was take your shoes off before you come in their presence. Uh, amen. Uh, and so God was saying to Moses, uh, you're walking into a I'm fixing to take you into a holy place. And so I need you to strip away, amen, that that is unclean because unclean can't come where clean belongs. And, and so Moses steps out of that uncleanness and God begins to tell him what he's fixing to do. God says, I'm fixing to send you back to where you run from. I'm sending you 
back to Pharaoh. I'm sending you back. I've heard the cry of my people. I've seen their tears. Amen. I'm sending you back. Amen. To them that you deliver them out of bondage. You're going to bring them out of captivity. And Moses done what every one of us do. He started looking for reasons why he wasn't a man. Now, wait a minute, God. Uh, couldn't you hear that I got a talk problem? I got a speech impediment? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not the man. Just thinking about Moses makes me stutter. And Moses began to use his inadequacies to be a reason for him to never go no farther than being a shepherd. If you let your inadequacies hinder you, you'll never go no farther than you are right now. My brother-in-law just learned how to play the guitar. He was playing it good. Learned it fast. He worked at Hytro in Jonesboro. Just, just last year retired. 38 years, something like that, in that place. But as a, just a young man, he worked in a pipe bending machine and and a piece of pipe lodged inside of that machine. And, and uh, he thought it tripped a breaker. And so, without thinking, he reached in his hand to get that piece of pipe. And that machine kicked back on and crushed his hand to the place that they had to remove it. It was his right hand. Immediately, everybody began to think, oh man, that's terrible. That's terrible. He was right in the middle of a house remodel and just learned to play the guitar and was just getting into church real good. And we all thought, what is he going to do? He'll never be able to play that guitar again. He'll never be able to finish his house. And his brother looked at him and says, I think I can come up with something. While his wrist, it cut it off right at the top of the wrist. While his wrist is healing, his brother went to thinking. And he went to work on what can I do to bring back the song to my brother. The enemy has just robbed him of something he loves. So he went to thinking, and old Danny went to thinking, and these, these Joneses are smart. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you right off bad. They, their daddy was one of the most brilliant men that ever walked upon the face of this earth. And that's the honest God truth. He, he's brilliant. Some of the most, some of the most amazing machines. I, I'm talking about sensors and everything else out there at Hydro that man built. Designed and built. Blows me away. I don't, he probably had a bit little to none, no education. He could barely hear, and you couldn't hardly understand him when he talked. But he was brilliant. But his son looked at the brother and said, something's got to be done. So he got out in his shop building. He got some Velcro. He got some pieces of plastic. And he went to working, and he made a device that goes around his wrist and straps at the top. And at the bottom is a little piece of plastic that sticks out that holds a guitar pick. And when that wrist was healed, he presented that to his brother. He said, whatever you do, don't stop playing for the Lord. Doug slipped that thing on his wrist, and he never missed a beat. Never missed a beat. Amen. I'm here to tell you, we can let our inadequacies and our problems hinder us from going forward if we want to. Or we can do something about it. And we can press toward the mark of the high calling of Christ Jesus right in the middle of that house remodel. I used to go over and try to help him. And he was, man, and the, one other thing about those Jones, they're the hardest-headed 
You got to love me. They were the hardest headed. They're going to do it on their own, buddy. And he would say, here's what was either going to happen. Either you're going to hold the ha- ha- hold the nail or, or and let me start it or vice versa. That dude smashed my fingers more than I can count. And so to got to the point that he would put the hammer handle in his mouth. God is my witness. And he would hold the nail and rear his head back and drive, start that nail, then take it and drive it to rest the way in. We finally found a self-loading hammer. You ever seen one? It's got a magnet deal and you push a button it shoots the nail out right at the end of the hammer and then holds the nail. You start it and you can go with it. We got him that, that hammer. My, my thought pattern here today is we can't let whatever Moses is talking about his inadequacies, inadequacies, God's talking about his ministry. And Moses is caught up and messed up in the two. God's saying, God's saying, I'm calling you to do something great. Moses is saying, but I've got a problem. God said, I'm sending you to do a great work. Moses is saying, but i got inadequacies. Moses is messed up in his thinking. And he says, i got these problems and I can't talk right. I can't talk plain. Finally, God interrupts him and says, who made the deaf and the dumb? He said, did I not make the other words? He said, Moses, did I not make you that way? He said, while we're yet speaking your brother Aaron is on his way right now he's going to be your mouthpiece quit giving excuses and get up and go and do what I called you to do and we found that Moses finally obeyed God and he went and he led those millions of people out of captivity because he quit being a shepherd and he become a soldier amen now, I don't know if Abram had the same problem that God had or not. I don't know if Abram had to uh, do some talking and, and try to persuade these people to, you know, um, I, want you to, I want you to pick up a sword and I want you to go to battle. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what he had to do. I just know that Abram said, we're going and you're going with me. and We're going to bring back. Something else I noticed in that scripture, Brother Dwayne, the Bible always makes history. How many knows the Bible, the, the Word of God is, is, is correct? And it, when it tells history, it tells stories. It tells the whole story. And if three was lost, it said then three was lost. Nowhere in here does it say that anybody from the house of Abram was lost. Anybody else see that? I looked for it. I couldn't find it. Nowhere in here does it ever say that anyone from the house of Abram was lost. So God took people who was not equipped to fight, made them fighters, sent them out. Look at here. Abram and his servants done more than all these other troops could do. All these big names that I read you, you know these names. Some of y'all were trying to say better than me as I was trying to say them, and you probably can. All those big names, they were, they were champions. They were fighters. But here's Abram just walking with God, just walking with God. God says, go, so he goes. All of a sudden, God starts speaking to him and tells him, and you know, our word comes to him, brother, and tells him, he, man, that, that, you know what this was? This was a divine interruption. Boy, I just hold, heard the Holy Ghost right there. This was a divine interruption in Abram's plan. Amen. I, this was, this, this was a divine plan. Amen. God interrupted his journey that he could do something for his brother. Amen. Now I want you to notice he went back and got back on the path. But on his journey, he seen a need and he responded to it. Amen. Same thing with, with Abraham. Um, same thing with Moses. There was a, a divine encounter that took place out there on the desert. I don't know where yours took place. I don't know where yours took place, or maybe it hasn't took place, but I pray that it does. And I pray that this year that you have a divine encounter. Amen. Maybe you're out doing some task out in the yard, and all of a sudden, you have your encounter. All of a sudden, God starts talking things to you that you've never seen or heard, and, and you'll deal with these others deal with. I'm going to throw these microphones in the trash. In the book of 
Daniel chapter 1, and I'm going to bring this to a close, and I'll, I'll, I'll pick this up tonight. Is that okay? Usually, son-in-law brings the word tonight. That was my plans, but can I have your spot? Thank you, sir. Um, there was, the Bible talks about 303 Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And uh, that were servants under the king that day and and uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar made a big old image um, it talks it said it was six cubits breadth it was three height was three score cubits and the breadth three of six cubits, therefore six cubits. I believe it was nine foot tall. Somebody, you Bible scholars can look that up. I believe it was over nine foot tall. Am, am I right? I think I am. It don't really matter. It was a big old idol. And King Nebuchadnezzar made this thing out of gold. And, um, and he gathered all the princes and the governors and the captains and the judges and the treasurers and the counselors, the sheriffs and the rulers of the provinces to this dedication of this image. And that's why these three Hebrew boys was there. And, uh, and so the deal was when you hear the sound of all these music playing, he said when you, when you hear the sound of of all these musics, and he named them, you bow before this image. And so, the music began to play, and everything began to take place, and I don't know. The Duane at Bible don't really tell me. I don't know if Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego got together and said, guys, we're in a dilemma. I don't, I don't know how this took place. I, I don't know. Um, I would like to say that they probably did. Uh, Bible don't tell us. But I'd like to, I'd like to say that they probably got their heads together and said, this ain't, this ain't even right. Uh, guys, we, we, we can't be a part of this. Uh, uh, maybe just one decided another two followed. I, I don't really know. Um, most likely there was a conversation, but... But when everybody else is bowing and bending and worshiping this old gold, this old golden image, old Shadrach, Meshach, they just stood tall. But don't you know they stood out in the crowd? How many knows that we should stand out in the crowd? Hello? <laughs> we should stand out in the crowd. Amen. Not because of something goofy we're doing, but because the holiness of God shines out on us. I never forget a few few months back, maybe it's been longer than that, it's before this China virus or this this COVID virus come in. My wife and I were in a restaurant, it's before this virus, and uh a gentleman come in and I seen him come in and I told my wife, I said, That's a preacher. And she said, you think? I said, I know. She said, do you know him? I said, nope. Never seen him before. That's a preacher. She said, how do you know? And I said, I can tell by looking at him. Amen. Went along. We, we watched them. And, and boy, they bowed their head and prayed. And, and I could just tell. He's a preacher. That's happened to me at a time or two. I had, had people come to me and say, you're a preacher, ain't you? I like that. Hello? Oh, there's a whole lot worse things they could say. You're a drunkard, ain't you? Uh, you're you're a carouser, ain't you? you? Oh, there's a lot of things they could say. But I'm sure these three guys stood out in the crowd. I believe it or not, I'm closing. <laughs> New people here, I get three closings. Um, but they made their mind that we're not gonna we're not gonna bow to this golden image. 
Number one, it's not pleasing to us. Number two, it's not pleasing to God. I've sure said that the other way around. Number one, it's not pleasing to God. Number two, it's not pleasing to us. Somebody run and told King Nebuchadnezzar. Always somebody going to run and tell on you. Hello? You ever notice that? Somebody run and told King Nebuchadnezzar, those three guys in your party, and you know, these three guys that, that you, you put on your committee, those three guys that you think so highly of, those three guys, they're not bowing. They're not bowing a knee. They're not bowing a body. They're not, they're not doing it. And old King Nebuchadnezzar said, there's got to be something done. Amen. So King Nebuchadnezzar made the proclamation again. Or I'm going to give you a second chance. Isn't that the way the enemy works? And so I give him a second chance. We're going to do this all over again. Since you messed it up the first time, Hebrew boys, let's see if you can't get it right this time. We're going to do this all over. And so they did it all over again. There they stood. I ain't doing it. I ain't been a part of that. I ain't. I am not going with you. I'm not do that. I will not partake of that. I will not bow down to that. I will not do it. But we need somebody in this whole world that will just take a stand and stand up and say, I'm, nope, 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 I'm not going to do that. I'm not doing it. You do it. Between you and God, I'm not going there. I'm not doing. It. And so they come back and said, "They still ain't bound." He said, "So oh, yeah, we got to throw them in the fire." And so they bound them up, hand and foot. You know the story. They throw them into the fire, the fiery furnace. After they heated it up seven times more than it's ever been heated before. Amen. <laughs> they heated it up. Even those that throw them in were killed. They throwed them in there, and the only thing the fire done was burn off those things that had them tied. Amen. And the old king looked in. I want to show you something I ain't never seen before. And I've and I'm, I'm, I got to quit because my time's gone. I, there, there's something I've never seen. This is going to be a year of revelation for me in the Word of God. I thank God for it. I thank God for it. But. Nowhere is it ever recorded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego seen the fourth man work walking in the fire. But the king saw him. <laughs> Hello? The king looked in there and said, Wait a minute. Hold up a second. Hush that music. Get away from that monument. <laughs> we got a problem. And they come running to him and said, what's wrong, king? He said, did we not throw in the furnace three men bound hand and foot? O king, thou knowest all things. Then why do I see four men in the furnace loosed and walking around? Amen. Can I tell you something? If you get where you need to be and I'll get where I need to be, when the enemy shows up, he's going to see that he's not just attacking us, but we have somebody else that's standing with us in the midst of the fire. Amen. And he's going to realize, amen, that there's a God that's bigger than any situation. Amen. And he's going to realize that this old image has got to go because there is no other God than the God of whom they serve. And he said, bring them out. Amen. And he said, I can't even smell smoke upon them. I'm telling you something, folk. Amen. God will take a servant and make a soldier out of you and use you to turn around a whole nation for the kingdom of God. King Nebuchadnezzar said, from this moment on, the only God we'll serve is the God that these boys serve. Because they chose to be different. They chose to be different. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll stop there because my time is done. Lord willing, I'll pick up tonight and finish the task. But... I want you to just look at what God did for Abram. And Abram, remember I told you when he started this journey was 75. I'm, 
I'm 56. Hallelujah. You're about ready for the calling, sis. You just lie five more years and God's going to say, Go ye where I tell you to go. She's a mess. She come to me this morning and said, I'm going home. Somebody got my seat. I said, I'm fixing to lay hands on you. <laughs> Amen. But I want you to notice that God took God took nobodies and made them somebody's. Now here's here's the very important thing as I quit. I, I gotta quit. Not one, Jacob, not one of those servants have ever been named. But every one of them was important. Every one of them was needed. Every one of them was necessary. Amen. But guess what? Their name's not even recorded. Huh? Amen. Their name's not recorded. You know why? Abram said it best. I don't want nothing you got to give me. I don't want any of the possessions. I don't want any of the goods. I don't want anything that was brought back. Because then you'll say, I've done it just for that. But I didn't do any for that because God is the glory. God gives the praise and God gives the honor. God says, I took, I took 300 nobodies and I've done a great work that a bunch of somebodies that I couldn't even name, right? Couldn't accomplish. Amen. Isn't it good to just be a little guy in the army of God, but to know that somewhere along the task, I'm leaving 2021 that this thing's going to just go, this thing's just going to burst in flames. I'm not talking about physically. Amen. I'm talking about spiritually. Amen. And this thing's going to grow and somebody's going to say, I, that thing has been nothing for 22 years. Uh, amen. Sitting down yonder. Amen. On the side of a road in a rundown building. Amen. But I'm here to tell you something. Uh, amen. I serve a God of good things. Uh, amen. And I believe that God's going to turn some things around and we're going to see a great thing happen in this year. In this year, we're going to see it happen. We're going to see it happen. Now, Father, I love you today. I pray, God, that you'd help us today. I pray, God, that you'd minister to us today, God.